Well, happy holidays, everybody. I hope you're enjoying your holiday week. We decided to give the team a little time off, but we've had some fun getting this particular episode together because it, it's the best of 2017. Some of the best moments Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley uh, had in 2017. You're going to enjoy it as much as we do. So uh, sit back, relax, enjoy your cup of eggnog, and here you go. The best of 2017. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Theroux and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 550 for Wednesday, December 27th, 2017. The best of 2017. Windows Weekly is brought to you by GoToWebinar, the trusted webinar platform with over 55,000 customers who have hosted over 2.7 million interactive web events to connect with their audiences. For more, visit GoToWebinar.com slash podcast. Well, hello, everybody. It's time for Windows Weekly. And unfortunately for us, it's December 27th, and we're not here right now. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley are festivating in their in their <laughs> respective homes. Mary Jo, are you going to go uh, back to Rhode Island? You were just there for Thanksgiving. No, I'm going to Massachusetts. Oh, Christmas in Massachusetts is beautiful. Yeah. I've, I've done it's that with a few my times. Mom. Very nice. And <laughs> yeah. Paul, you're obviously you're in Christmas headquarters there in Emmaus. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I would imagine we're going to have a, quite a quite a crew here. Yeah, I don't see any stockings on the fireplace, though. You got to get those up. Although, mm -hmm. I, by the way, so uh, yeah, that could happen. Um, I'm actually moving my office soon, so. Yeah. What? This has been your office all since you moved, like three months. I know it's never really felt right. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's a little. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's kind of like my desk is like this little island in the middle of a giant room. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to move to a little room. <laughs> okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. A closet? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a walk-in closet. <laughs> no, actually, it's, it's very analogous to the room I used to be in in my old house in Dedham. So it's oh, nice. in the same position in the okay. house. Uh, okay. It doesn't have French doors now, but it will or have some kind of – we're going to add some kind of doors to it. So so, uh, so this isn't heralding some sort of new marital relationship. It's just uh, – Oh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. No. <laughs> By the way, no. I think a lot of people who watch this show think you and Mary Jo are married, and you just pretend mm -hmm. to be in different places, but you're really in the same place. <laughs> we should set that That's record right. straight. Mary Jo right. is should. in New York, and Paul is in Pennsylvania. We should. They are separated by, <laughs> by land masses. However, uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that earlier this year, Paul claimed he wasn't trying to be Jesus. I don't we're gonna even do, know the context of this I, one. I don't either, but we're going to... So this show is a best of, as, and we did it with the help of all of our all of our viewers and listeners, and we thank you for your contributions, and we're going to kick it off with uh, this memory from... Um, let me just check and see. Uh, this bit of sacrilege. This, yes. courtesy of well, I think it's appropriate for uh, after Christmas. This is from our 500th, our quincentennial show, which we recorded... Back in January. So this is almost, this is probably the oldest clip wow. we've got. This is almost a, a year old watch. If they did let home users turn off um, updates for 35 days, I would guess the vast majority would not know about that or no, would That's not right. even try to figure out how, right? That's like exactly they would just right. not even. No. Which, which is so why was, it should be on by default in the home version yeah. of Windows 10, which is what <laughs> I wrote mean, yesterday. By default, defer for by 35 default, days? By default, it should defer for 35 days, exactly. Wow. Because if you're technical but then there's enough no that you want those it. updates. No, there are people testing it. That That's the thing. So Ooh. we have this group of insiders. <laughs> right. I, I, right. Like, it's a small well, group. I don't know. That, there are people I, testing it all the time. Okay. But Okay. Right. No, there will always be people who do it. Look, I mean, the, the, there are rings of testers still and the problem is one of those rings is normal people and unfortunately that's the big group and i just feel like that's the mistake that's happening here they've got this backwards um there will in fact be people i mean even if it's like one percent of windows 10 users one percent of windows 10 users is still a lot of users um and i i yep. and of course in that in that case you're getting people who are explicitly taking that risk and doing the right thing for the community or whatever it's the type of thing it's like enlisting for the army versus being sorry you're, you know, we've hit the M's and you're in. 
Paul mm. is fighting for the little people, and I God, I, I, God bless yeah, you. I, Look, I'm not like I'm not trying to be Jesus here. I'm just no. saying, no. you know, <laughs> like Good. it just seems like the right thing. <laughs> you don't have the beard for it, Paul. I'm just saying. <laughs> I could squeeze one um. out in thirty days. <laughs> Uh, how about phones? Which phones? Uh, this is a silly question, but which? Like, <laughs> here's a question no one on earth has nobody ever actually cares. Asked. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> in case you care, which Guys, phones are going to get the creators update? Oh, people care. Look really? at Twitter right now. It's They're like a crazy? dumpster fire. Really? <laughs> wow. Okay, so I got a list from um, some sources of mine that said, "Here are the phones that are going to get Windows 10 creators update." And here, and anything not on this list will not. Hmm. So I don't know if this is an accurate list. I asked Microsoft and they would not verify whether it's accurate or not. But there are not many phones on this list. There are like 10 or 11. I'll tell you what's on for Lumia. Lumia 550, the 640, 640XL, the 650, the 950, and 950XL. And then the HP Elite X3. There are a couple of Alcatel phones. There's a Vio phone. There's a Lenovo phone. Um, people are screaming on Twitter because they can successfully run the creator's update insider builds on uh, on phones that are much uh, older. By the way, this this happens every version. It happens version. every time that a phone version comes out. Right? So, by so, the way, the only phone, the only Lumia that you mentioned that wasn't the very latest generation of Lumias was the 640 slash 640 XL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is actually fairly astonishing. Yeah. Um. Everybody's like, what about this phone? What about this phone? I'm using Insider on this phone and it's working. It's actually working better than Anniversary Update. Oh, isn't update. that interesting? Um, so <sighs> I'll tell you what I don't know. I don't know if this is the complete list. I don't know if they'll add to this list. I don't know why the phones that are on this list are on it and why the ones that are not on it are not. I don't know anything, people. So stop beating me up on Twitter about this. <laughs> you're never, I'm just telling you're never you what I heard. Good. You're never going to get like a good a, answer to, the, to why. <laughs> I know. But, you know, so here's what here's what Microsoft did say when I asked. I, of course, I asked them about this and they said, you know, as with previous Windows updates, what what happens when we pull phones out of the um, list is they may not have updated drivers. The OEMs may no longer want to support them. Mobile carriers may no longer want to support them. It may vary on country. It may vary on a lot of things. Um that's all they're saying. They're saying they're going to update the product lifecycle page soon. And, you know, Microsoft said that April 25th is when the Windows 10 creators update for mobile will start rolling out. So I assume they're going to say something about this by then or then. And I am sure that whatever answer they give will satisfy all Windows Phone users and we have exactly. nothing to worry about. Oh, man. Yeah. So sorry, yeah. I don't know the answer. <laughs> um, they they, they, <laughs> they have. Me. <laughs> there is precedent for, you know, remember they added support for the icon over time after initially not supporting it on what, 1511, I think it was. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, I don't know this off the top of my head, but I bet if you were to go back and look at the supported phone list for 1511, 1607, now 1703, what you would see is a, a contraction of the total number of supported phones. Right. Plus, you know, it, people don't want to hear this, but. Phones don't have a long life cycle of support by any vendor, pretty much, right? So a yeah. phone that's two years old, it may work great and you want to keep it around, but the vendors don't want you to keep it around <laughs> and the carriers don't want you to keep them around. Yeah, so and if, they're and, gonna, and to, it's to like be planned fair, obsolescence. Or, it is yeah. literally planned obsolescence. Yeah. But but if you want to stick with your phone for whatever reason, um, they do give you the tools, especially the Lumias and some other devices as well to go back to the factory image and then you can go through the normal update process to get whatever updates were available for that version. You can do it for Windows 10 or Windows 8.1 and uh, mm -hmm. depending on the phone version you have. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I, it really kind of stinks that if you're in the Insider program and you're on some new version of Windows 10 and you actually have to wipe the thing to go back. I, I agree that's not ideal yeah. uh, for all right. the obvious reasons. But... At least you can, and you know, we, you can keep using it if you want to. You can. And we don't know how long you'll be able to keep using um, the one of the insider previews on your phone. It may be a really long time that you can continue to use it. And so, you yeah. know, saying that Microsoft won't roll out the creator's update to your phone, that doesn't really impact you if you're an insider and you're happily running creator's update. It will at some point, I would think. But we don't know when 
that will be. So yeah. So there. I I just expect the Windows Phone community to handle this with their usual sense of grace. You know, I think at this I, I point, understand. people who have bought Windows Phones feel like Microsoft owes them something. You know? They do. And they feel like they're being dumped on relentlessly yeah. and they yeah. bet on Microsoft and Microsoft's abandoning right. them. Right. I get it. Uh, guys, uh, and you, I feel bad. I'm sorry, but if, you wanna, if you want to make that argument, you got to get in line because there's a bunch of media center uses in front of you in Zoom. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I, I mean, it happens all the time. Whenever a product is discontinued, the sad thing is this isn't a discontinued product. It's just a, it's just an abandoned product. That's, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh Leo, when I say Abandoned that. No. but not forgotten. But not forgotten. Beloved. Definitely not forgotten. And I got to tell you, when uh, when I, you know, I'm as a Kin user, I really am mad at Microsoft <laughs> that they haven't kept that up to date either. Oh, man. Oh, no Kin. <laughs> Okay. Windows Kin, Kin was a good world. Kin was a good phone. I didn't have Kin was a great phone. Like it was idea. honestly it really was. I like the I, premise I a up. lot. The pricing, mm -hmm. uh the data plan you had to get through Verizon were screwed up and that was a Microsoft's fault. No, but um no. Yeah. Bad timing. So. <laughs> Punter Joe says we should call this Windows as a disservice. <laughs> oh. oh boy. Oh. That, who said that? Oh. Burn. That's, that's, that is <laughs> That's brilliant, and I am shamed that I never thought of that. Windows, uh, uh, you'll be seeing that in a column cl near you someday. Oh, someday that soon. is. Uh, who said that? Punter Joe is his handle. That is beautiful. Nice job, Punter Joe. Yep. Paul will be Paul will be stealing your shamelessly <laughs> stealing your Windows is a disservice. Bomo. Windows is a disservice or WAD, which even has WAD. a great acronym. WAD. Another WAD. We used to have WAD, didn't we? What was yeah, WAD? there was something that was WAD. That's good. It's really good. Windows is a data center. <laughs> yeah, something like something that. Something like that. <laughs> Speaking of Raymond US. Chen. Yes. Yeah. Did you read his most recent blog post? Oh, no, Which this one's well, from November. This is an old one. I, I just, was going to say, yeah, no, the most recent one was going to bore us all to death. Yeah, um, but the, yeah, the, the I, one yeah. of, man, this housing downturn is hitting. No, no, not that one. Uh, right. the, <laughs> one the one about uh, William, the the customer service rep it was i i guess i, I just saw it on uh, hacker news or reddit or somewhere yeah. and that's why i'm aware of it but now that i look at the, the date it's november 23rd 2009 <laughs> so you guys this is old you've seen this all before but yeah. it was the if one any, about if anyone yeah he does he has a great blog it's called the old yeah. new thing if you haven't read it before <laughs> so yeah so what he just talks about all sorts of microsofty kind of yep yeah yeah he's, he's a lot like, of little neat internal yeah bits you know? He's he's like the unofficial, or maybe even the official historian from Microsoft. He knows everything. He, uh, so I'm I'm sorry. I've been researching this NG, NGWS thing. Do you remember Windows Distributed Internet Applications 2000 or Win Win DNA 2000? Yeah, I do remember that. I geez, I forgot about this. <laughs> it's amazing how much stuff. So uh, crazy. I I, crazy. I guess since everybody this is this is such an old post. No, which one? Which one was it? Can I talk to that William fellow? He was so helpful. <laughs> I don't remember that one. So in 1989, Bill Gates was being taken on a guided tour of the product support department's new office building. And during his visit, he said, hey, you mind if I take this call? <laughs> so That's Bill, awesome. This is Raymond writing. Bill puts on a headset, sits down, and answers the phone. Hello, this is Microsoft product support. William speaking. How can I help you? Bill talks with the customer, collects the details of the problem, searches in the product support knowledge base, sifts through the search results, finds the solution, and patiently walks the customer through fixing the problem. The customer <laughs> is thrilled that William was able to fix the problem so quickly and with such a pleasant attitude. Bill wraps up the call, and thank you That's for using great. Microsoft products. At no point did Bill identify himself as anything other than William. The customer had no idea the product support engineer who took the call was Bill Gates, but the story doesn't end there. Everybody in the department, you know, within days knows that the time Bill took a product support call. Sometime later, the same customer calls back and says, <laughs> Hi, I called you folks with a problem some time ago, and I talked to a nice guy named William who straightened it all out. Can I have another, I have another question. Can I speak with William? Awesome. <laughs> product support engineer says, well, Okay, l let me see if William's available. Brings up the customer's service record, looks at the name of the support engineer who entered the earlier call, and it's Bill G. Amen. That's amazing. Um, sorry, but William's not available right now. His friends call him Bill, by the way. The person who helped you last time, that was Bill Gates. 
<laughs> the customer goes, oh, my God. <laughs> kind of a nice story. That and now true. now that I, you know, it's from Raymond Chen, that, you know, that's very credible, right? I'm sure it happened. Very. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's not unusual. CEOs often take uh, <laughs> customer support calls. Uh, all right. We, <laughs> I hope you're enjoying our best of episode of Windows Weekly. We'll be back next week in the new year in 2018 with all new content for you. Um, and uh, we're going to we did introduce this year a couple of new cast members, a couple of cats and a dog. Cat uh, members, yeah, cat members. Uh, Mary no, Jo's cat, dog, particularly, yeah. yeah. But we will we will talk. We will show you that, that moment when the cat decided to get in the act in just a second. But first, a, a word from our sponsor for this holiday festival. Hey, we'll have more of the best of uh, 2017 with Paul and Mary Jo in just a bit. But I want to. Actually, I'm really thrilled because a, a, a company that we've known for years decided that they thought the, the best of would be a great place to talk about their product. I'm very, very thrilled to welcome uh, GoToWebinar. It's a webinar platform. You know, that's when you can have uh, a speaker or two or three speaking to a vast audience. And nobody does this better than GoToWebinar. It's, uh, it's uh, so good that they host 2.7 million interactive web events with over 60 million views per year per year go to webinar believes that webinars are one of the best ways to interact with your prospects and your customers instead of you know trying to do business presentation or a company websites i've done webinars with go to webinar and it really is a great way uh, to to promote your company to teach uh, to interact with potential customers and current customers with GoToWebinar, you can create custom email invitations, confirmations, and reminders. Or let GoToWebinar handle it all with automated email templates. Some amazing features, too. Uh, when you do the webinar, the company's logo can be displayed, custom images on all the materials. You can create and schedule pre-recorded webinars that are as interactive as live events. They're, it's mobile-friendly, too. When you schedule a webinar... Edit a session or track a performance. You can do it from your iOS or Android device. One of the things I love about GoToWebinar is the ability to create polls. You can have up to 20 polls per session, and you can do it either ahead of time or on the fly, which is really great because your audience will get is much more engaged when they can you know do these these uh, polls, these interactivity. It just keeps their attention. You can add up to 20 questions to each of the 20 surveys and engage participants with the Q&A. Of course, you can have more than one presenter and panelist, as I mentioned. Up to six presenters can share their webcams and participate face-to-face. -face. You can broadcast a view of your desktop or a specific application. A really uh, great way to interact, to teach, to, uh, to meet your colleagues and your, uh, and your customers. And, of course, with GoToWebinar's reporting and analytics, you're just a click away from qualified leads, metrics, and data that will help you make your next webinar even better. And secure, you bet, 128-bit end-to-end AES encryption. Number one in customer satisfaction. It's the greatest. Turn your next presentation into a conversation with GoToWebinar. For more information, visit GoToWebinar.com slash podcast. That's GoToWebinar.com slash podcast. And we thank GoToWebinar for their support of Windows Weekly. All right, back we go. Mary Jo, when did you you get a cat? When did, what time? When in, when in the year did you get a cat? I got him um, right at the end of August. Okay, and uh, he was a rescue, right? Yes. And we've learned that uh, he did not mind being. Well, I think he. I, I'm not sure whether he wanted to be part of the show or he didn't like it that you were talking <laughs> to other people. Yeah, right. he uh, he's a good boy, but you know sometimes he's a devil. <laughs> we now he give demands you your attention. <laughs> he does. Now, whenever I tape Windows Weekly, by the way, I always have this with me. It's a little spare mouse that I can That's throw awesome. when he's about to grab my <laughs> camera or whatever. Like, yeah, go get it. <laughs> I just I want to warn you, he's going to figure out this. And, um, yes. You're going to need new, it's new not gonna go prophylactic well. measures. We'll watch <laughs> as Mary Jo's cat. Her new cat, Sriracha, steals the act. Hey, look who's here. Who? Oh, uh, <laughs> I thought I saw a putty tat. Is that, is his name something like, you know, Mr. Boots? No, his name is Sirachi. Oh, I like it. Is As that... in Sirachi hops. Ooh, <laughs> I like it. 
He's my new kitty. Is he new? <laughs> really? Brand new. Brand new. <gasps> Congratulations. Your first? So, um, first here in New York. Yep. Oh, you know, we... Um, Lisa's quite a cat lover. We have. I know. We have, she has we have a couple, three, right? Three. Oh, three. It's wow. way too many. And she's always <laughs> threatening to get more. One more and she becomes a cat lady. Sriracha. Yep. What, a boy Sriracha. or a girl? He's a boy. He's two and a half. He's a very rescue kitty then. Is that a yep. kind of hops? Is that what that is? Yeah. It is. Sriracha ace yeah. hops are from Japan. <laughs> okay. Not sriracha sauce because people are going to think no. you're talking sriracha mm -hmm. sauce. No. It's a spicy cat. <laughs> he's been spicy so far. <laughs> you like him? Are you happy with him? Yeah, he's great. He's great. Here's the, he's been uh, a good help in the office. Oh, it's <laughs> nice to have a kitty cat. It is. And this is, is because your apartment now is so vast. Yeah, right? that's it. <laughs> no, have, actually, now no, I can have kills. one. Before I couldn't have oh, one. Whoops. Look at him. Oh, we're going <laughs> to oh, get ready, kids. This is going to be a regular appearance. We're going to need a little... Um, little Can Sriracha button or something. Or third. That, uh, yeah. My, my cat is literally hire, hiding under a couch right now because <laughs> the people are Your cats are traumatized, working. aren't they? Yeah, they really are. <laughs> From the move? Actually, they got, they're pretty much over it, but they don't like, they're, they're still, yeah. Are you they're letting guys them out? Because when we moved once, one of our cats never came back. She got no. lost. No, or no, no, no. I would never, no. No, these are indoor cats. Yeah, so you're not letting them out. Yet. They did even, try to get out through the garage the other day. It's. It, it, I've heard it said that even if if they're outdoor cats, you should keep them inside for a little while till they. Yeah. Till kind of so they get adjusted. Adjusted. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they might have. To, yeah, they might try to go help. home. Sriracha you know? is S O R A C H I. Mm -hmm. That's him. Sriracha Ace. Ace. He's a dual purpose hop. He is. Does he actually <laughs> hop? Uh, he hops up on everything, pretty yeah, much. Like, <laughs> he. You know what? He's a cuddle cat. You're very yeah. lucky. An affectionate cat is. Yep. Wonderful, yeah. Most of the them norm are, is ambivalent. Yeah, most of them ambivalent, and vaguely Hell, disdainful, disdainful, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, arrogant, uh, yeah. uninterested at best. I want to. I want to have him learn how to sound the gong. That's going to be his best <sighs> trick. Cat gong. <laughs> Very nice to meet you, Sorachi. Sorachi. <laughs> when you consider like platform changes, I mean, this is probably one of the easiest imaginable and if you really were using were using us um you know moving to spot okay something something horrible has happened to mary joe <laughs> bathroom or something the menace look at her look at him oh man sriracha bit my finger <laughs> sriracha <laughs> what did he do pull down the camera yep <laughs> wow you know people say animals are dumb but no this no, is one heck of a smart cat he knows exactly oh, what's man. going on stop yeah, talking to that camera and yeah they're very they're very clear about what they want you know even That's though they can't amazing. speak amazing I was just watching him. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Sriracha ate my camera. <laughs> why Why does Sriracha have an English accent, Leo? Because <laughs> it's Charlie bit my <sighs> finger. I'm doing the, yeah. yeah, never mind. You got a code name for us? Yeah, the walking cat has been busy over in Codename Land this week. So he thinks he's found the code names for the Surface Book 2. Um, he thinks one of the two of them is called Pi Pyzix, P Y X I S, and the other is called Zariah. And so he's he um, he also found out that Vale um, is the code name for the new Surface Mouse. Huh. So he's he he's been trying to figure this out. He's been going back and forth with Pyxis. me, like, well, why do you think this is Py Pyxis, and why do you think this is this and that? So he found out that uh, Pyxis is a shape of Greek pottery where there's a separate uh. lid. And Panos Panay is Greek. So that I'm like, okay, maybe, you know. Um, but they've had a lot of really weird uh, code names for all their different Surface products. So maybe there is no theme or maybe there is some kind of a theme. I was thinking Constellations. Yeah, because Pixis is a star. It, it is? Okay, yeah. Pixis. Yeah, Pixis. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. But is, that. yeah, but is Zariah? Like, then I'm like, oh, what's Zariah then, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Zariah so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They call the Marin the wind Zariah. I don't know. It's not. I don't know. Yeah, but it's cool that he found that. Anyways, he was he was said to me they're called P and Z, and do you know what they are? And I'm like, no. And he said, I think they're Pixis and Zariah. Boy, so. it feels Pixis is a uh, 
is a star in the constellation uh, Virgo. I don't, but that doesn't help you with Zariah, so I don't... I think they're random. I think that's the point. I don't think there's a theme. Oh. You know? Damn it. We're, you know, it's not like back when they did, like, city days, or right. city names, or whatever, right. for Windows. Like, I, these things are all over the map. Yeah, because Vail could be Vail, Colorado. V-A-I-L. Mary Jo's frozen. Well... Unless she's holding the, the most incredible smile somehow. <laughs> She's this is she's this spoofing is us. Mis, this is her mysterious look. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> did Sirachi do that? He did. Oh. That's I was joking. He, that's what it was. He's but... been so great this whole show. And then suddenly, yep. boom. He said, he enough. Unplugged the laptop. That for two Let's hours. Talk those two losers. <laughs> so how's that fall created? <laughs> I got. I you really, know what? I, I, squirreled on I feel one. safe saying it's going better than yeah. expected. It is good. But as soon as you say that, like this week, I wrote a post saying, I'm "You know, sorry. it's going pretty well, all in all." Of course, every single person who has had any possible problem starts emailing you, and yeah. I would say there are a lot of little one-off things that people have encountered, but. Overall, I think Paul and I both have not gotten as many complaints on Twitter or email as we did with previous builds. How many uh, people have it now, would you estimate? 100 million, hmm. 40 million, 200 million? I don't think we know or even have a way to know. I am pushing the Brad button. Brad has, <laughs> Brad has somehow been tied to, to, <laughs> to the story. To, the, to, this, no, to this fade button where I normally oh fade oh. your lower thirds in and out. Oh. Uh, so, um, yeah. See, Brad comes up every time I press it. Is that a keyboard hey. thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think Brad has been in the studio and has sabotaged it. So he comes up. I'll some roundup for Brad. <laughs> for people listening at home, we have, um, uh, you know, we do video. Did you know that? And, yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, it's true. And we have. Since, uh, I don't know, 2007 or something, I think. We've it's mentioned it before, but they made a little, uh, mm -hmm. little, um, Prairie Dog uh, Brad that pops out his little head out of his <laughs> hole. And uh, it's RK now? Okay now. Oh, man. These no, guys I think he's giving up. The guy came yeah. in with a solder no, iron. Like, yeah, you're just, just going to have to live with it. <laughs> it's just something that happens on this show. Permanent Bradley. <laughs> so last week, Leo, you asked me if I had an Xbox One X. Yes, and you... Just, and I don't know what kind of cagey response I gave to that. You were very uh, cagey. However... I do. You do! Yes, I know it! I'm so excited! By the way, I took your advice, mm -hmm. and I downloaded the 4K content for yes. uh, or Assassin's Creed Origins. I decided on that one. And That's I, a good-looking game, I'm told. <laughs> so, I guess we'll have to wait till next week to find out. I have it on an but. external hard drive now, so I, uh, I will just be... And... I didn't know this, but you can save your settings out to the external hard drive. So I That's did right. that. That's brand new, by the way. Yes. Yeah. So now I can, I presume when I get my One X, I can uh, plug it in, plug in that external hard drive, restore settings, and I'll be able to play Assassin's Creed Origin immediately. Immediately. That's exactly right. That was the entire point of the tip. That's Love exactly it. it. Thank you for that tip. That's fantastic. Because I mean, that game is, well, all the games are humongous. You know, like yeah. uh, Forza yeah. 7 is like 95 gigabytes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put mean, a two terabyte drive on there, figuring I'm going to use it. Toy home, and you can't even use it. You know? <laughs> I have an internal terabyte, so now I'll have three terabytes. That should be, I hope, enough for a yeah, yeah year's yeah. worth. Uh, of yeah, game. I don't, I don't know the exact math, but if you think about the average size of an Xbox game, it's probably in the 40, 40 something right, gig range. Right. I mean, you can fit ten to eighteen games on in a terabyte. Yeah, so yeah, yeah easy. Uh, depending on the games, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I put up some Xbox One unboxing shots last Friday. Um, I don't believe I'm violating any terms of agreement by saying that um, I can write my first impressions this Friday. So I think the console comes out, what, Tuesday next week? So next week we, um, you know, we can... We can talk about so what we see. So on the bottom is the One S. On the top is the yep. One X, the new one. Yeah, so what they've done here is, A, obviously the console looks a lot like the previous console, which is great. The, the yeah. style is nice. The thing I thought that was really cool, if you look at the back of that thing, those aren't just the same ports. They're in exactly the same order, <laughs> you know? Oh, um, so, so I can... That's good, because I'll just slide yeah. it on top, and I'll yeah, transfer just, the cables over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, it works fine. That's you know? nice, Mike. It's little things like that. I like it. Yeah. 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 
That's nice. I can't. I'm not allowed to talk about the software experience or using it or games or anything like yeah, that yeah. yet. I can only talk but you about can show the hardware the back so. panel. So that's good. Yeah. So you've got HDMI in and out. They're still going to do the pass through, apparently. That's right. Um, you've got uh, two USB three Type A connectors. You've got in out, which is in out on your other one. I don't know what. Oh, IR out. I'm sorry. That's an IR right, blaster uh, port. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh no, IR. I'm sorry. 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 IR out. IR. Yeah, in, in, infrared out. IR blaster, and then a SPDIF optical audio port, yep. and uh, Ethernet jack. Yep. And so that's this. That's exactly. There's nothing new. I, I don't see a Kensington lock port on that anymore. But uh, that's not. I think it's there. I think it's just in a different. You need location. it for your dorm room, I guess. Because yeah, I'm you're not, gonna need it for this one. It's 500 bucks. You don't want this yeah, one walking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, sliding down. This is the unboxing unboxing experience. So you can look forward to. So you think you got the uh, retail packaging, even though you're getting a. I did get the retail packaging, yeah. although you can't really see it in that above picture. But that's it right there. Yeah. So that's the retail packaging. Yeah, yeah. They actually provided like a little thing over it that had some game right. cards and you know things, so we could get going on it. I like the. Uh, I love it that it's going to be a UHD 4K. Uh, yeah. Uh, HDR10, not Dolby Vision, although. Perhaps in a software update, Dolby Vision. Well, you can't talk. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Perhaps, Leo. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. He just have, you could just tug your ear if I'm right. <laughs> Where's the giant uh, power? Uh, power brick. It does not exist. Like the Xbox One S, you just Love record. It. It's inside. Love it. It's amazing how small it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Given that what, you've got a brick in there as well as everything yeah. else. Controller looks I will the say, same. Yeah. The controller is literally identical. This is maybe the one down note. Um, this is a five hundred dollar console. Like this thing, to me, I've been using Put that an elite, elite controller. In there. Put an elite in there. Come on. Yeah, that uh, the fall control is cheap. You know, it just feels plastic. Well, it's plastic. It is. You know, feels like it. It's just cheap. So yeah. that's a little disappointing. Yeah. But it is a little disappointing. Uh, I appreciate the consistency. I mean, it's an Xbox. My son took my elite controller. <laughs> I wanted another one. Mine is destroyed. It's fallen apart. I need. To, I, I want them to rev it so I can get a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, orange uh, X on the front there. No, no, it's just a re uh, reflection. It's a reflection. Never and um, this thing also stands on its side without you having to use a stand or you whatever this works. Stand anymore. Okay. That looks kind of orange. Yeah, I think it's just the table reflecting okay. on it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, USB port is on the right. Yep. And that's uh, the controller connect button there. Ah, the is that what it. that is? Controller connect. Okay. That's the. It looks like it's a wedge. It's like it, it, maybe I'm, maybe that's just because of the angle, but it looks like it's wedge shaped. It's not a square. Yeah, it's not. It's 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 a okay. standard kind of okay. pizza box. Okay. Boy, you really got the detail right in there on that. There's the infrared port, and what is mm -hmm. this button? That's there? covering uh, the, the before you can put a disc in. I think it's like a little warning label. You just oh, kill yeah. it off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I is this the eject for the disc? That button. It must be. Uh, that, yeah. I have never put a disc in it, and if life goes accordingly, I never will. Oh no, you want to get an H? No, <laughs> do yourself. <laughs> oh, no, a that's favor. true. A movie. Get a movie. one Blu-ray movie. Yeah, not a game. I disc. do actually. I have a selection. I have about a half dozen yeah. actually yeah. for this reason. Mad Max, Fury Road. Yeah. Well, I've already done. See, I've done this on the Xbox One S, so I've kind of. Right. It, that, that's, not that's not yeah, changed. That's not changed. I can't. I am looking forward By to. By the way, Mad Max it. is one of them. That's yep. true. Uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. When that comes out, will be the one to get. I think. Because yep. that's a UHD encoded, but it's also got HDR. And this does HDR, and that's important. Mm -hmm. Right, Mary Jo? <laughs> right. So with us. Guys, I'm just scanning beer menus yeah, while you're yeah, chatting enjoy away. The beer, enjoy the beer. Mm -hmm. There's the standing on its side uh, uh, way to do it. Um, would you recommend, you know, we used to, way back when, when you had a PC, we'd say format the disc in the orientation it's going to end up in. That oh, probably, wow. You probably don't have to do that anymore. No, it's... Well, I, did, I never... <laughs> you I never, never did that? I never considered that. No, no yeah. that's funny. Yeah, that was when gravity meant something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, it looks nice. It's fairly... It's a little bigger, right, than the S, but... Uh, I think it might be a little... Oh, it's a little taller, I taller, guess. Taller, yeah. okay. Yeah. But not much. If you have it... It should fit in any uh, any hole you put the S in. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. Nice. All right. See, so yeah, look, well, it's hard to tell because you... Yeah, I think it is a little taller. Okay. Yeah, not much. No. They're pretty close. Yeah, it's surprising. Yeah. It's pretty... I think the footprint is a little smaller, but I think it might be... Well, I don't know. Looking at that, it doesn't look taller, does it? Yeah, it looks, it looks identical, frankly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's close. Good. This is good. It's that overhang that's deceptive. Yeah, that's the where the 4K is. 
right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> right in that bump. Mary Jo, can you see how obsessive we are? This is I can. We are looking it's... at pictures. <laughs> Guys, well, this I is like me. This is like me and untapped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're looking at pictures. Like, so there's the unboxing experience, ladies and gentlemen. And your first review embargo lifts Friday. It won't be just you. I'm sure there'll be others reviewing That's it. That's going to be half the plan. Yeah. yeah. I bet I bet Brad Sams will review it. Don't be Actually, insulting. He, uh, he does not have one. <laughs> there he is, in fact. Oh, they surprised me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I have a review. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely have a I review. I don't know what Brad is wearing. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I I think Brad forgot that Halloween is for children. <laughs> I'm a scary, I'm a scary, uh, scary blue bear. I am, I'm a scary, scary blue bear. You know, everyone jokes on Windows Weekly and outside of Windows Weekly how much I don't care about gaming. But I will tell you this. I do care about it to the extent that you just mentioned it, Padre, which is it's a service, right? And the ser cloud services are Microsoft's future. So I do care about Xbox Live as a service that Microsoft is looking at to monetize Windows. So I don't totally not care, but yeah. I just personally don't care. But I understand the value to the company about gaming overall and why they continue to invest in gaming. Um, so I do I do get it, but just not a personal appeal thing. Even Cuphead, guys, sorry. I know people were thinking that was what was going to win me over, but... Now, I think I'm is destined not to be a gamer. Awesome. Now, Paul, I, 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 have you pre-ordered? Because yeah, I, I actually did pre-order. Yeah. So I'm yeah, I, I on my Steam account. I'm ready for Cuphead to drop. Right. <laughs> uh, what what is it account. about Cuphead that captured the imagination of so many people? And Mary Jo Foley, you've, you've already expressed that it's not going to win you over. But some people are saying <sighs> that might be the game. But you, that you appreciate. Gets you I, I think she appreciates <laughs> the awesomeness of it. Right. That I do. The graphics. There's something universal. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, when we first saw sense. Cuphead, when was that, like three years ago, two, two, three years ago, I was like, okay, now there's a game that looks sort of fun for somebody like me who doesn't care about first-person shooters, right? Like, okay, right. that's cool. You know what it is? Today's kids are missing out on something that I think was actually really important and multi-generational before, which was that when I grew up, when you grew up, uh, and for another half generation and a few generations before that, we all actually had these shared experiences on TV that were classic cartoons and movies from the past in some cases, right? And so my kids today, uh, my kids are actually old enough that they sort of hit on the end of this, but really young kids today don't have that experience where you get up on Saturday morning and the Warner Brother cartoons are just on TV and there's little educational things between them and it's like an, it's a morning and it's something you look forward to and it's great. Um, some years ago, I showed my kids a, a like a bunch of Roadrunner, Wiley e. Coyote mm -hmm. cartoons, hoping to God that they would just love this like I did. And they did. They immediately fell in love with this thing. And I think the kind of like, um, it's like a 1930s cartoon aesthetic that's in Cuphead is not, you don't have to have been around then. None of us were. But because that stuff kind of persisted we all kind of appreciate it and understand it immediately. That whole thing where like the characters are kind of, you know, bouncing up and down like Steamboat, Steamboat Willie did or like Mickey Mouse did in Steamboat Willie, I think is just mm -hmm. a, it's neat. And I think even, you know, people today with their lack of attention span and, and lack of appreciation <laughs> of things that came in the past, um, I, I think even they would look at this and just because it's kind of frenetic and fast moving mm -hmm. and, and unique looking. I mean, to them, maybe they've never seen anything that looks like this, but I, I just think there's a universal quality to this game that's really hard to explain, uh, and, and unless you see it, and then you're just like, "Yep, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. it's just neat looking." I, I remember the I've first seen people. The is it hard to play though? Like I, I asked this last week too because I've seen a couple of people who who've had a chance to do hands on with it, yeah, saying it's yeah, yeah. pretty hard. So I have a theory about that. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was hard. It's a platformer, right? Okay. So, um, yeah. I think the problem is it is universally attractive to people. So people mm -hmm. who don't play a lot of games pick this thing up and they're like, oh, this is kind of hard. You know, it's like, yeah, you've been using a fidget spinner for the past six months. Maybe you should do something <laughs> slightly more complicated, um, you know, manipulate an object in real time. And, and you know, maybe this will be good for your hand-eye coordination. I don't know. All right. See how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Just a thought. Yeah. Right. There's a there's a famous video right now on YouTube of, uh, I, 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 his name flees me, but... He played Cuphead and got... Dean Takahashi. Dean, right. He got maybe, what, 60% through the level after 30 yep. minutes. 
And people oh, were funny. the comments are, are horrible. People are calling him an idiot. They're calling. They say he he oh, deliberately that's too bad. Usually up on the YouTube, experience. the comments are great. I know, right? Yeah, uh, it's not what I expect. Yeah, but constructive. I mean, these are particularly right. bileful because they're they're saying yeah. he know. he's not a real video game journalist, even though he's been covering this longer than uh, anyone yeah, yeah, else yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah, what are your credentials yeah. exactly? Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. But, and yes, yeah. it is it is difficult, but it, it's especially difficult for those who maybe haven't picked up a platformer in a while. A platformer is That's not right. FPS. Right. No, yeah. It's a different kind of game. And and this harkens back to, you know, for me as an Amiga guy, like the Shadow of the Beast type games, or if you came from the UK, there was a whole, uh, not even a family, but just a whole group of games that came out of there that were, that were platform side scrollers. That was just what the games were back then. The original Duke Nukem games, by the way, were side scrolling 2d plat you know uh, platformers that's what they were uh, and then the third one came and it went first person but um yeah this is this is what video well they didn't have this kind of awesome graphics obviously the, the effect here is so beautiful but mm -hmm. the 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 game style the play style is uh, is classic platformer now this game almost ended up in development hell because yep. i saw it first in 2015 and I, I loved it. I loved the aesthetic. Like you, the very mm -hmm. first thing I thought of was, oh, that's Steamboat Willie. That, that's the Ooh, animation yeah. style. But since then, they actually rewrote the entire game. And, yeah. and the details are starting to emerge about why that happened. Uh, but essentially, you have a bunch of people who were incredibly passionate about the project, and it just didn't feel Wouldn't right. Die. Yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah. I admire that, even though most of the 99% of the time when you have a team like that, that essentially means the project will never be released. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, so I'm oh, happy to play. Yeah, when this thing, right, when a couple of Christmases kind of came and went and this didn't show up, the thought was, oh, this, that's too bad. That looked cool. Yeah. Because uh, that mm -hmm. happens to a lot of games, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think it's it's fantastic that this thing is finally happening. Right, right. Well, Mary Jo, I know, I know you're not into it. However, the next time you come to the Brick House, we will have multiple machines here, probably okay. a Surface, a desktop, and a console, all with, all with, uh, with Cuphead. Would you be willing <laughs> to go a couple of rounds of co-op with me? Sure, you'll have to show me how to play, but I, I would try it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cartoon violence, so it's it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's no violence like cartoon violence. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> have you finished Cuphead? Did you stop playing Cuphead? Probably. Paul. Yeah, I can't, I can't even. I can't get far into this game at all. I'm yeah. just, despite the fact that I literally play video games every single day. I it's a hard it game. I yeah. love it still. Uh, in fact, Mary Jo Foley discovered it at E3 several years ago. Uh, but you haven't played it I, yet, Mary Jo. I was the original Cuphead fan. I know. It's true. At, a, at an arm's length, we should point I out. I thought this was going to be the game that got her into the fold. <laughs> <laughs> no such luck. I will point out, though, that... Um, and I want to take credit for it, because he's using my gamer tag to play. But I, in all honesty, I can't. That uh, Michael, our son, my stepson, Michael, right. has defeated it oh. at Expert. He okay, has, maybe I'll bring. Maybe when my son comes home over the break, you need I'll have him. Good twitch reflexes, I think, is the yeah. key. Yeah, I've, I've watched twitched, him. Though. Like I mean, he labors at it. Thing. He labored at it. He and his friend uh, uh, did it, and and then. Uh, but now the funny thing is, he's playing from the beginning again. He liked it that much. Mm. Wow. He even has a Cuphead merch. Now he's not selling. He's purchased it. Actually, <laughs> sure, he hasn't purchased it. We've purchased it. All right. We move on. Mary Jo's not the only one with the feline problems. Paul has a cat. What's your cat's name? I have two cats, um, Dasher and Dancer. Aww. Right. Aww. Guess when we got them. Guess when? Great little Christmas cats. Mm. Christmas kitties. <laughs> well, here for your delectation. This was from uh, September of this year. Uh, Paul's kitty cat iOS is, um, I don't want to say ideal, but it works very well on mobile devices, on mobile form factors. Um, it works a lot less well when you try to turn it into a Surface type device. What is my cat doing? My cat is in the trash barrel. Can you see it? <laughs> she just came out of it. All right, so I, she's, she's having Don't empty the trash. Week. You know what it is? What, like People come to the home and they're doing work and it freaks out the cats. And so this is her trying yeah. to reassure herself that everything's okay. I got to pet her a lot, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Windows Phone, well, let's not. Oh, the New York Police Department <laughs> would prefer you don't mention that, if you don't mind. Actually, I, I, I do want to mention that because... Um, 30, I, I, what are they, by 36,000 Windows Phones? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, but here's the thing. When, when that story <laughs> first broke the other day, Brad excitedly contacted me on Skype, and, you know, we were kind of shooting jokes back and forth about it. 
And he said, are you going to write about this? Because if you're not going to write about this, I'm going to write about this. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to write about this. It would just come off as hateful, you know, <laughs> uh, Well, because it's ludicrous. Like two years ago when they adopted this platform, they never should have done that. Microsoft had announced their intention to abandon the platform in two years anyway. And right. I, I just, it never made, it, it was never made any sense to me. Place. Yeah. It was so my then. take on this was just let this toilet flush by itself. I have nothing to do with it. It's fine. <laughs> All right. But here's oh, the boy. thing. The woman, all right, so the New York Post, in addition, in other words, for us in the tech industry, we see this as kind of a Windows Phone story, right? But actually, right. what this was really about was the woman mm -hmm. who single-handedly made this decision from within the New York Police Department. Um, and they really kind of tore her apart. It was kind of a terrible yeah. personal attack. Maybe this is what the it New York was. Post does. So. That's the post. <laughs> That's the post. It was kind of awful, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so we're, we're talking, woman, for people who don't know the story, we're talking about Jessica Tisch, who was the uh, police deputy commissioner of information technology. She, two years ago, made the decision that the New York Police Department would buy 36,000 Windows phones. Um, and at the time, it was like this huge win for yeah. Windows phones. Yep. And, and yep. you know, we talk about enthusiasts and, and you have to think like the guys who are kind of Microsoft enthusiasts saw this as one of those end of the war, you know, come from behind victories. Like, see, guys, it's the platform's not dead. You know, people see a use in it and blah, 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 whatever. So, OK, I, I look, I just saw this story and I said, I'm not I'm not touching this. It's too ugly. I, I just there's no point in it. I don't want to, you know, add fuel to the fire. But then that woman <laughs> wrote a retort to oh, New York no. Times. And What'd I understand say? why. I understand why she did it, <laughs> but my God, did she blow it? What she, she blew it? <laughs> because the thing is, they attacked her personally, and so what she was trying to do was demonstrate that she made a good decision. Oh. But what she did in doing that was revealed Proof. why they chose Windows Phone, oh, which was and that it's terrible. Oh, no. I'll just say this as far as the personal attacks. Well, I, I, she tried to justify it by saying, you know, during this time period, we saved so many lives and answered so many nine one one calls and blah blah whatever it was. Such a good idea. But, that stuff could have happened with any phone, yeah, okay? Yeah, it had nothing yeah, to do yeah. with any special powers yeah. that Windows Phone had. This is why they adopted Windows Phone. They got 36,000 Windows Phones for free. Yeah. And whoever <laughs> was giving them those phones for free was also going to give them another 36,000 phones for free two years later as replacements. In other words, iPhones probably would have been $500 a piece. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Windows Phones were $0 a it piece. Was a good deal, I can't actually. do this math. What's 500 times uh, yeah. 72,000? That's yeah. how much money they saved. <laughs> it was a good deal. Yeah. That's why they did it. I not know. because it was the best platform, not because yeah. it made a particular amount of free sense, phones. not because it was Windows. Yep. It was free It was free phones. And yeah. it's like, ugh. Like, I know. I, I You know. <laughs> you could just see Microsoft. Enough. You could see Microsoft sitting there. They gave me this really lame statement about we're really proud of our Windows phone deal with the NYPD still. And then this woman reveals it was a giveaway. And that's the only reason they did it. And <laughs> you could just see them all sitting there like, oh. So, you know, if you uh, look, if you cared about this platform, if you still care about this platform. <laughs> Yeah. This is just, it's, I refer to it today as the final insult. This is the final middle finger extended it's... toward this platform and its users and fans. It's mm -hmm. just that that one little bit of hope you had <laughs> at the end wasn't just futile. It was like laugh, <laughs> laughably off base. Like it, they just <laughs> gave them away. Um, so you want to hear why I wrote about it though? And yes. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I felt the same way Paul did when I first saw it. I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, you know. <laughs> and then then I'm like, but, you know, what's more worrisome to me about this story is Microsoft held up the NYPD as an example of the kind of customer that it thought it could still attract with yeah. some kind of a mobile you know, device. Give away customers stuff. that want free things. Yeah, give away stuff no, but they, attract some no, great customers. Those people aren't called customers, no. by the way. Uh, <laughs> no, so, so, but they kept saying like, you know, we know we got beat in the consumer phone space but by look, iPhone and look Android. look at the enterprise space. But or, look at the enterprise. And right. here is an example of the right. kind of thing like where they bought the platform so that they could take advantage of our better security and our manageability and blah, blah, blah. So now that lie has been shown, right? And so then, but you're, then this the woman lashing point. out at the New York Post, I know, yeah. trying to demonstrate that they were wrong about her. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, uh, it's like I know. But I mean, she, doesn't this happen all the time in enterprise? I mean, this is not an unusual. Oh no, giveaways happen 
all the time. And they, and they don't, what's funny is they can't say free. They can't say it was free. They say at no cost. That's kind of like the secret oh, jargon for, we gave them the hardware for free and maybe co yeah. the software cost a penny or whatever. Right? We'll get <laughs> but then we'll get management fees. Right, and it's a great look, pro, you know, demo. Yeah. The reason right. you give someone something for free is that you hope they are going to pay for it on an ongoing basis, right? Exactly. We give P uh, PC buyers a free copy of Office yeah. 365 right. Personal right. because we expect that next year they're going to pay for it and then they'll pay for it going forward. It makes sense. That's like a business decision. Yeah. Um, Plus, these guys quit before they could even get the replacements. <laughs> like no, did you and, see? And by the way, suddenly even, iOS is just fine. You know, no, this was even more ago, interesting. Someone. Last <clears throat> October, this... <clears throat> Uh, the NYPD gave an interview to CNET and they said, we're already looking at replacing these phones with Windows 10 mobile and blah, blah, blah. We've already made the decision. We're going with Windows phone. Oh. Okay. That was October oh. 2016, right? So they were still saying they were going to stay with Windows phone hmm. even late last year. So, yeah. Hmm. And, it's you not, know, um, the Post said it was because they couldn't upgrade from Windows Phone 8.1, which Microsoft is no longer supporting. That actually was not true. Both of those phone models they bought could have been upgraded to a version of Windows 10 Mobile. Um, right. So that right. actually wasn't even the excuse. Um, now, you're a New Yorker, Mary Jo, so you could clarify this for me. The New York Post is considered... The bastion of journalism in lower Manhattan. Oh, close, close. Yeah. I think the term you're looking for is rag. <laughs> but, but you know what? They're, every once in a while, they get a great tech scoop. That was a good scoop. It was a great scoop. And thanks to uh, this commissioner writing about it, it became a really good scoop. I know. It's, I, I, it, I, listen, I completely get the human aspect of this story. She, they really did throw under a bus. It, got, it was it terrible. Got, it got, and it got a lot of press. It was terrible. Sorry, you know, let's, uh, let's find out something... Let's find people who will say something negative about this woman. Do we have a couple of them? Great. Let's quote those guys and not say who they are. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just such a terrible kind of hit job. But if you um, if you and I think we can presume this, if you say that NYPD was going to buy somebody's phone, so they were going to pay all the costs, the management fees, everything, and instead Microsoft said, no, no, we'll give it to you. She <laughs> should be lionized, as you said, Paul. She saved them millions of dollars. Yeah. I mean, maybe well, she got it for free. Yeah. Apple wasn't going to give it to him for free. Yes. And, the, the and as you is, say, the phone did the same thing as any other phone would have done. Yeah, I, that's the thing. You know, we were joking about Windows Phone the other day on Twitter because I was on Twitter. And that's what I do. What but, do. Um, <laughs> the, you know, the phones are, it's not like you're downloading Candy Crush on the thing, right? No. I mean, they're designed right. with yeah. they have custom apps and that's what they do. So, you know, the iPhones that these people will be using in the future will probably be locked down in some way. Um, to prevent them from downloading right. Candy Crush or right. whatever. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's, yeah, that stuff kind of doesn't matter. But the, the point yeah. though, I mean, I, I, are Windows phones particularly stable? I mean, um, especially when you move to Windows 10 mobile, um, I don't think many people would make that claim. Well, you so, know, I so, know. I, you know, when, when they were trying to make, when Microsoft was trying to make the case that we still have a chance at the business customer, their whole thing was, you know, all they want are custom apps on their device. We can deliver that. We can help out with that. That we can do, yeah. Right. But now that this has happened, it makes me wonder if it's if it's making the Microsoft people who still believe they could, should and could make a telephony-enabled mobile device wonder. Right. Should like if have, this happened, should what a, they do this? We, what an opportunity <laughs> I sort of feel this. like Microsoft needs to stick to their strengths. Right. And so when you yeah. think about their mobile yeah. initiatives, you can pick any one you want. They've all failed. Yeah. But what has Microsoft done particularly well all of a sudden? They released this kind of uh, old school laptop that's been sitting in the lab for three years. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Using last year's tech, actually two years ago, technology. And people love it. <laughs> and they love it. I know. You know? know, and maybe that's the kind of thing Microsoft needs to focus on, the kind of meat and potatoes of the PC productivity world and not mm -hmm. these kind of goofy, you know, tertiary initiatives that I don't think are going to ever go anywhere. Agree. It's an interesting story. I like it. Yep. I'm glad yeah, you ended up covering it. Yeah. Uh, every time I try to get out, Leo, they just pull they me pull back. pulling me in. <laughs> He's pulling me in. Notice we neither of us just said the bad word, Surface What's, Phone. Neither of us said oh, Surface Phone. Well, well I think we've <laughs> frankly long 
I actually, um, I've configured my keyboard so that if I actually type the, those two words next to each other, I get jolted. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Do you want to talk a little bit about, it is a story and it's kind of a breaking story right now. Last week, uh, I heard a good interview on Fresh Air with the author of a P, uh, the cover story on Wired this month about how the Soviet Union was using the Ukraine as a testing ground for cyber warfare. Ukraine has really been shut down in so many ways. Attacks on the grid, attacks on the elections, attacks on news, and all of it coming, as far as anybody can tell, from Russia, from state-sponsored hacking. Mm -hmm. Then this week, out of the Ukraine, out of an accounting firm in the Ukraine, uh, a new uh, malware, ransomware virus, uh, according to the story in Wired, the Ukraine has been funding its anti, its its side of the cyber war against Russia with ransomware, <laughs> and out of the Ukrainian uh, accounting firm, whether they were, it's, it, I think it's very likely that they were hacked, not that they pro perpetrated the hack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, comes this new uh, ransomware Petya, which is spreading like wildfire. The big uh, shipping container company Maersk out of Denmark, had to shut down almost its entire global operations. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's been a nightmare. Yeah. And it takes advantage of a number of flaws in Windows, uh, several f discovered by the NSA. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, God for those back doors. Wow. <laughs> what, what would we do without them? So um, do you want to talk about that and what maybe yeah. people should do? You know, we didn't want to talk a lot about it because it's being covered in a lot of other places. But the one the one thing I had a lot of people ask me um, in the past couple of days is, well, can you if you've already patched for WannaCry, does that mean you're totally safe? And the answer is no. And the reason is, if there's even one computer on your network that's not patched, you're in trouble. So everybody keeps saying it, but I guess we should say it one more time. Patch everything, everything. on your network. Everything. everything. And that's hard if you're, uh, you know, a, a hospital is ex example. Yep. And you've got XP running on an x-ray machine. You may not be able to update mm -hmm. it. So pull, just disconnect from the internet, I guess. I don't know. It's I not know. an easy answer. No. No. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I don't think we have a lot more to lend to the conversation. No. I, I mean... It just is like, okay, guys, we know we've said it before, but patch, you know, and and um, one guy yesterday said to me, you know, I thought we were all patched, but now it looks mm -hmm. like somebody who's patched has got it. And it, it's just that weakest link argument. So just make sure you're patched. Like and, yeah. um, Zach Whitaker, who works with us, he said, you know what? The flaw was patched, but there's always one, right? right. There's always that one machine right. or the one right. person, yep. right? Uh, you know, it, and this is a breaking story, too. I mean, this is going on right yeah. now. So there's probably yep. more to be said about it, and we'll cover it more uh, on our Definitely. shows and so forth. But uh, most of the exploits that this uh, Petya and their, its variants take advantage of were patched in March right? Uh, right. by Microsoft. Right. But, but which is what makes it an ad for Microsoft's rapid release. Yeah, <laughs> mantra. You know, I mean, they couldn't have asked. It's it, you know, it's like a wag the dog kind of thing. We'll find out Microsoft was behind this. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. just to just to, just for that I told you so moment. Um, <laughs> this is why we want everyone on Windows 10, and we want you to be kept up to date. And then, of course, the uh, German email company <laughs> that uh, the hacker was using. For the yep. Bitcoin, so you'd email him, say, "I paid my Bitcoin. Here's the payment. Uh, please yeah. send me my." Co they shut down the emails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, even if you thought you'd pay, and by the way, it, it's you know, at, at least twenty people had paid the last time I checked. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you won't get the. You won't be able to right. get a hold of the guy. So the whole yep. thing is just uh, it's a global mess. It's a mess. Global yeah. mess, and what, at least one hospital was shut down by it. So, yeah. Mm. Nasty, okay. nasty, nasty. Yeah. Well, there it is. Some of the best moments from a great year, 2017. So much fun working with you guys. Paul and Mary Joe make it so easy each week. They, they put the whole rundown together. They line up all the stuff they're going to talk about. And because they really do have their finger 
They're respected. Wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you telling me we don't have to do that? I, I, I We could mail this. <laughs> ah, no, you do have to do it. Don't get it. Uh, is that an option? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, we'll just ring the gong for him. Hold on. <laughs> Please gong, Paul. There you go. We, we end oh, the year God. with the uh, requisite gonging of the Paul. It's a new Christmas tradition. I deserved it. Uh, <laughs> decked the gong with boughs of holly. Uh, it has been it a very interesting year, hasn't it? And I and I have to say, I look forward to seeing what 2018 brings. Microsoft's become a more and more interesting story over the last few years. And uh, we will continue, I promise, to bring you all the Microsoft news each Wednesday with Windows Weekly. Paul, Mary Jo, happy new year. I wish you the best for 2018. And we'll see you right here in one week, Wednesdays. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC, no, 1900 UTC on twit.tv. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>